Next on list here, we've got to talk about Lush One. Lush World has decided to talk about his sobriety, right? Um, or him not being sober anymore. And it's kind of a sad update, I'm not going to lie. But in true Agostino fashion, I have to say, I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to lie. There are some people out there that are pretending to be, you know, sympathetic of his fucking plight. They're pretending to have feelings for him and shit and feel like oh my god i hope you get back in your straight and narrow and shit but if he's willingly decided to you know relapse and decide to go back into drinking and doing drugs again that's that's on him i mean he's a grown-up adult if he wants to do that let him do what he wants to do but i don't know i don't really give a fuck i'm not gonna lie so let's hear lush one announce that you know the secret that everybody kind of could tell because if you see pictures of him online you can see tell he's definitely using again but um let's hear lush one describe how he ended up using it again and this looks like every this looks like every fucking late night place i've been to after hours right and and afters where you're fucking you're fucking wired to the fucking gills and you end up at some random person's house and you end up bumping into a lush character there's always these type of people that exist around there right who has way too much money way too much free time if i'm not mistaken his brother isn't Lush One's brother the CEO of like Indeed, Indeed.com? I'm pretty sure. Lush One's brother is the CEO of Indeed.com. This guy here, his brother is the CEO of Indeed. So he comes from a very well-to-do, very accomplished, very successful family, very rich family. And here he is cosplaying as some sort of SoundCloud rapper when he's like in his 40s and shit. It's so sad. But I'm yeah. not going to like skirt the issue any longer. I know a lot of people might want to like clip this and share it, but... The reality is this, since uh, the end of September, uh -huh. I've been smoking weed and drinking. Oh, really? You feel me? Like, I could never weed. tell. I could never fucking tell. You're telling me this guy here has been smoking and drinking. Really? I could never fucking tell. You're telling me this guy here with the fucking, the bag the size of fucking CDs has been smoking and drinking. No fucking way. Wow. I'm shocked. And drink again. I had three and a half years clean and sober off of everything. Um, I've taken a couple, I've taken some bars. I'm not going to lie to you. Just a couple of bars. What's a couple of bars? Does that mean two every other day? Two every day? Two every hour? Two every minute? What's a couple of bars? Let, let's, be, let's get specific here. Let's get specific, as Jordan Peterson would say. <laughs> let's get specific. What about men? <laughs> I've taken some bars, like, and, uh, but, like, what I'm, I'm not fucking with any powders of any kind. There's hella, uh, bro, I'm not trying to get up that here, baby. I, I love that distinction, right? I relapsed after three years of being sober, but I'm not doing coke. I'm not doing, uh, speed. I'm not doing anything else. I'm just doing Xanax and drinking and weed. I love that distinction, like, <laughs> okay, brother, whatever you say. That's how you want. You feel me? Like, so, and I'm not, cocaine, like, but. I, like, my life was at a point where I was feeling like I got sober because my life was unmanageable. You know what I mean? No, of course. My life was unmanageable. I, why are you trying to get. Why are you trying to get. Why are you trying to get validation and affirmation from these donuts around you? My life was unstable. My life wasn't good. You know what I mean? It's like, bro, their whole entire existence are not good. You see what he's wearing? You see this guy's hairstyle. You see this guy's fucking jeans. Their whole existence isn't good. They're not the they're not the best people. They're not the best brains in the business. You know, like I don't know. <laughs> I had no like. I was really unhappy with, you know, at the time I was like thirty seven years old, thirty eight years old, and I was like, damn, like, <laughs> there's no more moves I had to bust yet. Like I was like, my shit's completely fucked up. Let me get sober. I'm very grateful that I got sober. And for the time, I'm gonna be taking calls shortly. I'll call you back 256. Um, however, however, um, Oh yeah, he has, these, he has his phone number on his Instagram so you can call him whenever you want, by the way. If ever there was a fucking sign of a loser, that is one of them. My life got to a point where I felt like, this isn't why I got sober. So why did you get sober then? I'm fucking broke. That's a weird way to justify taking drugs and drinking again, isn't it, right? But I guess if you're an addict, you rationalize or you try to 
rationalize your bad decisions anyway you know that's what you do that's a strange way to fucking try to explain why it's okay for you to do drugs and drink again when clearly you had a problem to the point where you had to get sober dicey 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 bro everything that i built has collapsed around me and uh here is the real catalyst yeah tell us to, what's the real catalyst like what y'all could call it a relapse me call it, I'm getting high. What do you mean y'all could call it a relapse? It, that's what it is. He sounds like Kanye. When Kanye had his breakdown, he was like, it's not a breakdown, it's a breakthrough. No, 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 no. It's a breakdown, brother. We heard what you said. <laughs> you know, we heard what you said. We saw what you did. We saw what you looked like. It's a breakdown. Let's call it what it is. It's a relapse. It's a breakdown. Y'all could call it a relapse. What do you call it then? <laughs> to, like what y'all could call it a relapse. Me call it, I'm getting high again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting high again. <laughs> Big up him, bro. He's going to, you're going to hear a report of him being found behind a dumpster somewhere. Unresponsive. For sure, man. It is what it is, isn't it? Like, you know, people die every day, B. You feel me? Like, I'm smoking weed. And I like smoking weed. You're like, I don't want to start medical card I don't, I'm, from, I'm from california i don't need a medical card I, I, I had a medical card in 2003 you know what i mean like, I'm, 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 this guy trying to spit game to people that are like half his age is so embarrassing man but he also kind of have you ever seen this um i've never been that guy though because i don't like to take advantage of people like that and i get uncomfortable too but sometimes this is only for the the party boys and girls out there if you party enough you sometimes end up at people's houses after hours and there'll always be the same type of person character caricature or personality that exists there there'll be like a rich guy or girl who's got money who doesn't have many friends who maybe is a bit lame maybe he's a bit old fat ugly whatever the thing is that makes him insecure but they're trying to seek that they're trying to get validation from you guys because you seem like young and fun and shit so they'll either buy more drugs to make you stay with them for longer or they'll just start talking about all these wild and vacuum adventures they've had. So it seems like this is the same type of scenario is happening here. Lush is like the older, experienced guy who's been around the block a few times but has a bit more money in his pocket and he can legitimately supply everybody with whatever they want, you know? And then they're basically sat there because, you know, they probably don't have houses they can go back home to and do what they want. So they hang out with him. And he obviously enjoys their company, so he basically is able to keep the, you know, he basically he's got a, maybe an Amex in his back pocket that he can buy a couple of eight balls with. That's what it seems like to me here. I was one of the first. I was on the one that you're talking about. No, no, I literally had a medical card in 2003. So, um, as far, but yeah, do I do I believe in the medicinal effects of marijuana? I never said that they were bad, but I know at the time that I couldn't do anything. I knew that I needed to completely abstain from all mind altering substances. I'm not going to point out the hypocrisy of 12 step programs or try to like tear them down. I can say a lot because 12 step programs look, by the way, for everybody, uh, anything, anything y'all want to ask or say, please chime in. Any that's not good, man. Again, I don't have an issue with him getting sober and then deciding to go back to use use drugs again. Fair enough, do what you want to do. But it's him trying to now call into question the Top Step program and basically try and poo-poo his what his journey to sobriety and make it seem like it wasn't that big of a deal. That's the issue. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't deny what you are. Do you know what I mean? If you're an addict and you want to go back to doing what you want to do, do what you want to do. But this idea that it was never a bigger issue... I just did it as like, he's making it seem like it was like a social experiment or something like it was just like a, it was like a thing that he just did for himself just to kind of like you know try it out for the for the sake of it it's like bro you had an issue that's why you went that you know you went that lane which was good you took an ownership of it you recognized it you got some benefit from it now you're in a different part of your life you want to change fair enough but let's not lie to ourselves you know that it's that's the worst thing you can do in, in any part of of life really lying to yourself is really pointless right because you know it's not true. You know it. This is an open forum. You feel me? I want y'all. Hey, y'all in this bitch. And we, go. We, we all together. Hey, you feel me? Oh, yeah. Like 10, 15 deep in this oh, yeah. Hey, when I say hey, Uno, Uno, hey, Uno, hey, Uno, 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 one, two, three. Uno, Uno. 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 If, you like, Uno. Since, if we're gonna do it formally, it's gonna be like this. You feel me? Like um, you know. And I don't give.
a fuck if she got fake titties. Uh-uh. Just been live and direct. We in Salt uh-huh. Lake City. Uh-huh. Yes. Can no. I get a ooh no? Ooh, ooh no. no. It's something like that. It's something like that. All right. But so at a certain point, wow. At a certain point, I watched this video. It was a documentary about me that followed a day in the life of me back in 2013, and. For actually, before that, I watched the a documentary that was just filmed to me from behind the scenes of when I was in Oakland, and I saw myself, and I hated the way that I looked, I hated my energy, I hated the way that I was coming off, I hated the person that I'd become, and it's like, I was completely stifled, and then I saw this video of me 10 years prior to that, and I was like, that's the energy, that's what people fell in love with. That's what makes me feel comfortable in my own skin. So he feels like he's, this is kind of like the Burt Crasher thing, isn't it? Burt Crasher is the same thing. Burt Crasher doesn't want to get sober because he feels like if he gets sober, the fans won't like him because he feels like the best version of Burt is the drunk one. The one that's always wanting to have shots, always wants to drink after after shows and shit. So maybe this is what Lush is talking about. He feels like when he was drugged up and looking gaunt and shit and looking terrible as he does now, that's when he was the most litest, the most popular, the most whatever it may be. Fair play. And I was like, I wanted to recapture that. Now, my instant reaction wasn't like, I need to start getting fucked up. Where's the plug at? I'm going to Columbia and it's snorting a, half, a quarter key off of a stripper's butthole. That wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't my, look, I don't need pink eye, all right? That that? Wasn't, I, I would love to do that. Okay. That was not my initial, that was not my initial. The people in the room laughing. It's the people in the room laughing. It's the people in the room laughing and giggling. As if like he's fucking Dave Chappelle or some shit. All waiting for him to get the, you know, to call the plug and get more gear in. He's being a, he's, this is the definition of enabler, isn't it? My initial thought at that moment was, I need to rediscover that light that I have within me. So my first thought naturally was psychedelics. I was like, I don't know if that's like the, the addict in me or what, but I was like, let me get some shrooms, let me get some, you feel me, like, let me tap in. Hey, what you on right now? You hear that a lot from, I wonder what that is. You hear that a lot from guys who are like former addicts and shit, who are struggling with stuff. They love, they love to like do the whole psychedelic thing. They love to use that as a way to kind of like, as a soft way to get back into doing drugs, as if that's like, okay. I wonder why that is. Maybe it's a way to kind of, try to excuse yourself to take drugs maybe it's um them actually trying to find answers maybe i don't know but you hear a lot of addicts say that like wanting to get into psychedelics like as a thing to kind of dip your toes back into i wonder why that is yeah, bro, I, i'm just i'm high i'm drunk and i'm off anyway so lush is high and, and drunk and off a couple of bars maybe two maybe an eight ball maybe some pills who knows but i have to be honest and i say this with all sincerity and all seriousness i don't care i really don't really don't give a fuck if this ends up ending up tragic for him it's his own fault no one else is to blame even these enablers and idiots around him he's a grown-ass man you know he's lived a lot he's done a lot he's gone through sobriety he's realized it's not for him he's dabbled back into the dark arts if it ends up badly for him it ends up badly for him i think there needs to be a lot more reality there's be a lot more realness online with these sort of things people extending fake olive branches of you know empathy and shit online when i think that empathy and concern should be safe for your actual family members and people you actually care about you see a lot of it in the comments here people like you know pretending like they give a shit i don't give a fuck look i said a prayer and i will continue to pray for you lush you already overcame so many battles and you will continue to you already have such a beautiful and positive strong personality there's no need for anything that alters you in your way of thinking don't negative things in the world discourage you he knows all this shit you're wasting your breath. He knows this shit. He knows all of this stuff. Lush one, you know where all this drug use leads. Please surround yourself with sober people and that you have your best interest. Just remember, relapse is a part of recovery and maybe this bender will remind you why you became sober. No, it won't. This is not one of those benders. I've, I've heard of them a lot. I've heard of people who, who have gone sober, who've gone through sobriety. They have an issue. They go on a bender and then they get back on sobriety, right? Because they quickly realize, oh, I don't want to go down this path anymore. But this above, that above video looked like somebody that has decided he's made a choice 
this doesn't look like somebody that's going on a bender. This looks like a choice. He decided, I want to go back to being a drug guy. That was when I fell in love with myself. That's when I was the most littest. That was when my glory years were. Maybe it's a midlife crisis, but this doesn't seem like a bender, a brief bender. He's decided he wants to be a druggie again. So whatever. You are intelligent and a talented, mm, talented, I, I don't know about that one, uh, man, you should force to be reckoned with when sober. You can tell you are messed up. Your spirit isn't there damn lush breaking sobriety to party with backpack kid <laughs> you're better than this homie <laughs> exactly but maybe he's not and maybe you're like again maybe it's my inability maybe it's my love of fucking you know fuck-ups but aren't you allowed to be a fuck-up isn't that shouldn't be shouldn't be, shouldn't be a, should you be allowed to fuck up your life intentionally without people trying to intervene and give you an intervention at all turns should you not be allowed as an adult to just say you know what I've gone down the right path. I've seen what the right path is. I'm deciding not to do the right thing. I won't do the bad thing. Should you be able to just do that? Without people thinking that you're sad and you're going through things. Oh, you want to be a fuck up? Cool. Let him be a fuck up. What's the problem here? It's only going to harm him and his family anyway. It's not going to harm anybody else. Who gives a fuck? He's old enough. He's seen everything. Like, if you want to be a fuck up, let him be a fuck up. Pray for you, Lush. Prayers. Hi, Lush. I knew it. You weren't sober anymore. What? You started wearing the head rags under your hat. Um, work to get back to on a wagon. It's not too late. Relapses may happen on the road to recovery. Prayers for you, bro. There's more to life than clout. Stay off the grid, my friend. Stay off the grid. Find yourself. Imagine breaking almost five years of sobriety to party with 19-year-olds from Salt Lake, Utah. Lush, bro. I think you're really going to regret this in a month when you got going to get some introspection back in your life. I'm the king of relapses myself, but to risk it all for this? Come on, bro. These people look like they cow tip in weekends. <laughs> I don't know what cow tip is, by the way. I'm just laughing, but I have no idea. What the fuck is cow tip? What is cow tipping? What is that? They cow tip on weekends. What does that mean? Is a purported activity of sneaking up on an unsuspecting sleeping upright cow and pushing it over for entertainment <laughs> okay that's really funny that's a really good insult that's a really good insult look at me exactly Koyla. look at me saying out loud i'm such a read accident what's cow tipping <laughs> what are tater tats <laughs> i'm so fucking redacted i swear to god i'm the king of redax anyway let's continue Tulsa program are great for tackling addiction but it's only blah, blah, blah. anyway long story short he's gone back in he's relapsed he's doing what he wants to do and i've taken the unpopular stance that i don't care and if he ends up being reported that he's been found unresponsive behind a trash bin somewhere you know what i mean he'll use himself to blame Maybe I'm a bit harsh in that regard, but I think that's a way to be with this sort of thing.